I'm Here's Jimmy. Uh, what? Huh? Go ahead. <laughs> you gotta give us a little warning before you just kick off into a show. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. <laughs> Tubes. Tubes. Tubular. Tubular. Tubes on the YouTubes. Are these edible? No. no I wouldn't. Don't eat no, that's tubes. a bad tubes. idea. That's <laughs> your glass. You don't eat those. That's probably bad, bad for some bad. reason or another. I eat tubes. I eat tubes. Don't eat tubes. What we got here? Today we have a tube tester. Tubes. So vacuum tubes. Tubes. Uh, in this case, I've got two identical tubes. One doesn't work. One does work. And we're going to look at how a tube tester simply works. <laughs> Sweet. What? Let's, Let's do that. Let's simply test some tubes. Let's simply test some tubes. <laughs> okay. So. How do you test tubes? Hmm. How's that work? The book is actually quite straightforward. So okay. you, you get the, the spec of the tube that you have, which I looked it up. I have downloaded the, the manual for this which thing. Which you do based on the number of the tube. In this yep. case, you have a 5U8. Yep. So the first you do two tests once you fire it on fired up rather and let it warm up for a minute because it's tube it's got to heat up mm-hmm. first thing you do is grid emissions and you simply have a good or a bad yep so grid emissions the is the bottom there, so. and the other one's good so this tube is good. Yep. It's so good it, here and good. So there. in your book, you you get the information on the yep. settings. that said that actually is pretty easy to tell by the first number off your tube. Yeah. So it'll be five volts. This is some of your bi- these are your bias controls, I believe. Yeah. Um, but the manual and, tells you what these should be set in yeah. each. Uh, and then which socket? Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's straightforward. It says it'll do here, then here, then here, then here, and you just do it. So okay. that's so that was this tube, and I have and it's already hot now. Oh yeah. Tube they're, they're tubes get warm. hot. So, and then <laughs> I'll plug in water. the bad one here. So this tube here I know is bad because I've already tested all my tubes at one point because I got bored and went, let's test tubes. Well, yeah, you have a giant box of tubes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah big yeah, big I box. Mean. So this one, well, let's see if I can do it here. It was fluctuating. Actually, it was a little bit. Sometimes they don't act right until they start warming up and they get real weird. Yeah, and this was actually starting to behave. But you can see how the meter's like jumping around a little bit, and sometimes it goes into reject. And then the quality of this one was also one that was like fading for a while. So it's yeah. probably set. It may have been jarred loose to where it works now. It's possible. Anyway, so this will tell the emissions. In other words, is it having great emission issues? Because you don't see where it's red now. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you don't want that. And the quality is still good. So the yeah. quality of, of how much it can amplify is one thing. And the other is the grid emissions. And the hotter it gets, you know, so it kind of goes up and fluctuates yeah. around. So this is a bad tube. but It may still work, but it probably won't work forever. No. And, and if you're using it in certain situations, it's going to be uh, really noisy. Yes. So the grid emissions is a problem because so we'll, uh, tubes simply send signal from the cathode to the anode. Mm-hmm. In other words, the low or the uh, negative voltage to the high, the, the positive voltage. Um, they send electrons across that, and then the grid, which literally looks like a screen off your window controls that flow so that a slight voltage on the on that screen control a slight plus voltage on that will cause a lot of change in the other one that's simply how tube works and there's a lot more to it than that but that's the basics so this thing just tells you you know is it good by two tests right. quite simply so this one which is gonna be hot now because oh, yeah. i hate touching it because they're so hot now and if i put the other one back on here which is already cooled down and we let it warm up for a minute or 10. See, if you do this initially, you can actually watch them. Like, it'll show, like, replace. And there's as it warms up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So this one actually has basically almost no grid emissions, which is what you what want. You want yeah. But the quality is really, really good. So this is 
one of the tests that you can do. And of course, it can test big tubes, small tubes, pretty much anything plugs in here. It will even test 6146 power tubes. Oh, that's cool. For like radio transfer, ham radio transmitters. This one will test mm-hmm. that. Um, and it does too, because the ones I have are a little iffy on the, on the quality. They're kind of into the yellow a little right. bit, but they still work. Where did you acquire this test in a box? So this was purchased at our ham fest this last year. And I didn't know if it worked. I'm like, well, I'll see if it works because you never know. There's not a lot to this, honestly. But um, it's one of those things that usually they, they don't work very well and all this kind of stuff. And I fired this thing up and it worked perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yay, let's test tubes now. So <laughs> I spent an afternoon when I was really, really bored going, I'm just going to test tubes. Test tubes. <laughs> So why I, not? I have a Syncor brand tester that I don't even know where I've got it. I got it a long time ago. Yep. You can't get these new that I know of, but uh, not there that are I've plenty seen. of them floating around out there. Yes. You'll see. I've seen them at flea markets. I've seen them at yard sales. Seriously. Yeah. At least once. Well, I've yeah. seen them at every ham fest. So. Yep. And I paid a ton of money for this. This was 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Big money. <laughs> big money. I think mine came from my <laughs> wife's grandpa's house. It was free. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, free. Yeah, free is always good. Um, I probably could have looked around and found one for free, but this was sitting there, and I'm like, you know, I kind of need a tube tester. And this was 20. Like, the other one was like 30, and the only real difference was it the latch on the case worked on that one, and this one didn't. I'm like, I don't care about that. Right. That's not an important piece. Nope. You know, so, hey. Very cool. Just to step back a little bit here. When I was a kid and you went into the Hooks drugstore. Mm-hmm. They had a big tube tester in there that you could hook up and test tubes. Sure. Just, you know, the tubes from your radio huh. or your TV or whatever. And like people were expected to test your own high voltage equipment and everything yeah. else. <laughs> Here, shock yourself. I'm sure good. a lot of those weren't very efficient because there's a few different types of tests out there. This yeah. appears to be a basic emission tester. It does test for shorts, it looks like. So. It does. Yeah, yeah. You get, and I've had a tube with shorts. Yeah. Um, and the ones, uh, the ones at the drugstore, I think, were mostly just emission tests. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And there's there's different. I, these settings here, I think, are which one the heater is on, maybe, and which That'd one's the right, grid probably. for which pin is which, I think, is how those actually work. Anyway, yeah. um, and I could look it up, honestly, because in this, like, unlike older stuff, but this thing actually has the schematic with it. Hmm. I can find it. There it is. So you can easily determine what it's trying to do. And these switches, switch two, switch three, are adjusting which pin does what. So, which I don't know why I call switch three, switch two, it's B and C here, but you get the idea. So A is your bias. It's, this is a variable resistor. So this is probably... Hmm. it's really funny they don't label it very well in here but it is actually <laughs> uh, that's probably this thing I'm going to assume or that no. I'm not sure which anyway uh, and then that one there is, is that because you're switching which voltage is what mm-hmm. but yeah so this <laughs> got is got at least two tubes in it, in it it looks like it does uh, that's a rectifier yep. and I that's a 6 BN6 and this is 6B and 8. Maybe it's 6, 6B and 8. Anyway. Um, so there's not a whole lot to this, but it does actually nope. work. Nope. And the other thing, the trick you could do this, if this too is failed, because it, like this one here, if it's failed, it is just a diode. Right. You could replace it with a modern high Absolutely. voltage diode, and it would actually work fine. Yep. Um, yeah, so there's, you know, some little tricks to this. But, yeah, the fact this is, I mean, you know, here's the book. It's Model Devil. <laughs> Model Devil. <laughs> the Lucifer version. It's, it's the yeah. evil version. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, I don't know what this and this are supposed to do. Oh. And there's a, vol- there's a potentiometer there, too. Quality. So when we, when we say yeah, pot, yeah. it's actually short for potentiometer or basically volume control. I think this, I haven't looked. I think that's for an RCA New Vista. That is for a particular kind of tube. Yeah, I do know and that. That's a type. It's a, you, you don't hardly ever see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The nitty bitty um, tube RCA made to try to compete with the transistor, which is comical. So, yeah. <laughs> well, and like the last series of tubes that I've ever seen were really tiny. They were used in uh, military radio, and they yep. were they were small. Those were new vistas. Yeah, yeah, that is so, the only other use for them for the most part, other than uh, RCA TV tuners. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From so, the 60s. So. Yeah. And that, what I used to have was a PRC something or another. Yeah. But it was a, cool. um, but it had, yeah, tubes in that thing. And the backpack radio weighed about a ton. Yeah. No. <laughs> took a thousand small, AA. Small back. tubes or not, it was still heavy. <laughs> <laughs> he literally, so they generated a high voltage with AA batteries. So, right. you know, this should tell you something right there. Um, so anyway, this thing is uh, pretty basic, but. Oh, yeah. It'll tell you if you have a bad tube. So if you have like a guitar amp or something like that, it still uses tubes or old tube radios or something. Finding one of these things working or finding one and getting it working would be worth your while. Just to, if nothing else, to make sure that you had, you know, a way to test the tubes that you have. Sure. Um, you know, and check them. There are still tubes being made. So some people think there's not. There actually are. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, that's like the original the plate. Yeah, the middle, the, the plate for the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a high voltage. I wouldn't touch yep, that. Don't yeah. touch that. <laughs> so, Zap. yeah, that would hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the basic tube tester, and it's just one you can carry with you, of course. Yep, I'll be using one of these in some videos coming up when we get into some more antique radio restorations or yep. revivals, or more like revivals. I don't totally <laughs> restore them usually, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's I need to do some of that too. So. Yes, more repairs. Got to repair stuff, but I got some stuff. I got a, a Atari 800 XL at home, which is not tube. <laughs> no. Uh, that needs some work. And I've got, although I did get my TRS-80. I brought it with me, but I didn't, didn't get a chance to use it today. But that's okay. No. <sighs> it is what it is. Yes. Anyway. Anyway. Thanks so for watching. If you've, yeah, if you've ever used one of these or something like this, or remember going back into the old drugstores, uh, back in the day, back in the 80s or 70s or whatever, and testing tubes with this. Hey, let us know, you know, down in the comments what uh, what you you know what you tested and did it work? Did the, did it tell you if it had a bad or a good tube in it? Yep. Um, that's always fun to hear some of those old stories because I I still remember that when I was a kid, so that was pretty cool. Yep. Um, and if you haven't uh, hit the uh, like button yet, if you like the video, make sure you do that. If you haven't hit the uh, subscribe yet, I would highly recommend that you do that that way you can you know it kind of helps us a lot honestly yes. make sure you hit the bell icon so it lets you know when you when we release a video it lets you know that so i get this i'll eventually learn how to talk when this is <laughs> um yeah awesome hey well until next time i'm timmy i'm justin and i'm nathan and this is three old tech dudes later Thanks for hanging out with us here on 3 Old Tech Dudes. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at 3 Old Tech Dudes 1 on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.